COVID-19, it's the new pandemic that's rocked our world. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's been affected by it in some way or the other. There are over 125,000 cases and over 5,000 people have died. It's spread to almost 121 countries around the world. Schools are shutting down, borders are closing, markets are crashing. But what I've noticed amongst the panic is that information about what the disease actually does and how to prevent it gets lost. I created a video a few weeks back, but the information in that has since become outdated. I decided to update the video and improve it by getting medical advice from a professional medical practitioner. I'll be interviewing Dr. Sanjeev Mehta, a top chest specialist who works at Leelawati Hospital in Mumbai. He has had over 26 years of experience in his field and is the founder of the Lung India Foundation. Without further ado, here's the interview. The symptoms of virus are like any cold, so it's cough, uh, fever, running nose. Uh, and I at least do not think we should tell people that you can differentiate one from the other just on the basis of any symptoms. Um, the only way to know the difference is to have it tested. The present evidence indicates that the coronavirus is transmitted through what is called as droplet uh, transmission, which means that there are particles of water that come out without secretions and whenever a person coughs or even uh, sneezes then particles of the virus which are within the water system of the body, the mucus, will be thrown out. For a certain period of time they survive on the surfaces of inanimate objects. So either it will go direct to the other individual or if that individual handles something that is being infected then that will get transmitted to that person because then the person has to touch the face or the nose and then from this object to the nose the uh, transmission takes place. So that's an excellent question. We really don't know the exact um, virulence of this particular virus and the reason I say this is because there's conflicting data out there. Uh, data from some parts of the world suggests that it is not very virulent in the sense that it doesn't cause that much death, even if it causes symptoms to some of the people. Uh, the average generally is that about 65 to 75 percent of the people, once they are infected, will have at most mild symptoms. About 10 to 20 percent will have more symptoms that require treatment, uh, maybe even in a hospital. It's a very small percentage thereafter that will go on to become critical and a further small percentage will end up very critical or dying. Now the challenge here is we really don't know the denominator because we don't know how many people are out in the community that did get the virus, never been tested, so you don't have a denominator. So I'm not so sure if the mortality and the morbidity figures actually appear to be more than they really are. For a while we felt the children were not infected. Just today I read a report that even children have been infected but fortunately uh, all have survived and this is out of China. So I think this is a very rapidly moving field. We'll have answers every day. Um, much is to be yet learned about this virus. Uh, but yes, across the world the information is that it is more uh, virulent and deadly in the elderly. But that's not for this virus alone, that's for any infection. Now, whether it be even a simple cough or malaria, the elder the person, the weaker the immune system, more the com comorbidities, greater the chance that the person is going to suffer and that's universal. So we really don't know it's simple things like asthma, whether they are at a greater risk, but people who have serious comorbidities are clearly at greater risk. Now, when we talk of serious comorbidities, we mean people are constantly taking steroids, people who have uh, chemotherapy for cancer, those are serious comorbidities, kidney failure. Now, as far as simpler comorbidities like asthma, allergic rhinitis, I don't have the data and I don't think I should say anything uh, once till the picture is completely clear. So uh, that's a very important thing. 
So there are, I think, multiple levels of prevention. One is at the individual level. And then we have community level. So the individual level. Uh, first of all, as an individual, such as uh, you know anybody who's watching this, uh, the first thing is avoid contact in crowded places. You don't know who's got the virus. That's getting the virus in. It is at this moment a little controversial about wearing masks. Uh, we really don't know how efficacious is the standard routine surgical mask. N95 is definitely going to be better. Some people say we should take complete airborne precautions. Um, I think uh, that's yet unclear. But the important thing is that the patient should definitely wear the mask to prevent infection to others. The people who are wearing masks should be very careful with what are the areas they're touching, how long they wear the mask, how they handle it. Uh, and, you know, it was... Um, ridiculous we go to a restaurant everybody's wearing a mask the food comes everybody takes it off and then they, with the same hands they put it back on i don't think that's really helpful at all that's at that level but most important about the uh, more than the mask is actually washing your hands the longer you wash your hands that is so much better uh, it should be at least 30 seconds maybe a minute uh, if you touch anything we do this as doctors all the time we have these sanitizers and uh, soap and water Keep yourself completely clean. Make sure that you don't transfer infection to yourself. Uh, that's the first thing. At the community level, and you can see all the governments are doing that, you have to start preventing gatherings of too many people. So that's happening across. Schools are closing down. Uh, offices are closing. Work from home. Prevent the uh, spread. We don't have the answer to that. Based on past history of SARS, it was generally believed that when it gets warmer, these viruses will not survive on external surfaces because then the droplets desiccate and there is the virus gets exposed. And anything above a certain degree, like I think outside much of the body temperature, they, they're not going to survive. The recent report that was in the news just two days ago said that if that be the case then why is Singapore having cases and why is uh, Australia having cases because they are in the summer. So I think the answer is not really clear. I'm not seeing a massive outbreak in these warm countries at this time. So that's we are hopeful but I don't think we can say that we have the answer to that just now. Yes you can and uh, in Mumbai to the best of my knowledge it is the Kasturba hospital. Uh, across India, there are the All India Institutes of Medical Sciences that have been designated. Again, these numbers are changing and every day new labs are being added. Check, check with the local healthcare providers for the testing centers. I can understand why people are panicking because of the hype created in the media. Uh, we are not sure that that justified at all. The recommendation from most government authorities is do not buy masks and toilet paper because leave that for the affected patients. Otherwise, there'll be a fake scarcity. Uh, the doctors, the nurses, the healthcare providers, the patients themselves, they're the ones who need to be given these protective measures. And if, if they're out of supply, that's going to put the whole country, actually the whole country's healthcare system at risk because the people who are supposed to have them don't have it and it's all sitting in people's homes i think that's detrimental for the community overall very very good question can we be treated and the answer is that there is at this moment uh, a lot of rumors but no approved treatment for the covid 19. Uh, what we do as doctors is take care of the organs that are affected so we have symptomatic treatment and we have supportive treatment so if there is nasal discharge cough then we treat the cough and nasal discharge if there's a secondary infection we treat that if there's respiratory distress then we treat the respiratory distress so there's a lot of supportive care and i don't want people to uh, panic there's a lot of support available and if you actually look at the numbers the vast majority of people do get well definitely below the age of 80 uh, the I, I think the mortality below the age of 80 is only 0.8 or 1%. So I think the vast majority of people are getting well.
yeah it cannot be passed through food hot cooked food is not going to transmit uh, any infection at all yes if the person who's cooked the food or is a server there has it then maybe droplets may pass but so that's why it's important to make sure that the chefs and the cooks are all uh, healthy if they have symptoms and these people who are uh, in contact with a large number of people they are the ones who should be you know quarantined if at all uh, but if you cook a food at home it's hot and cooked no virus is going to survive it's completely safe okay that, 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 thank you doctor um, for your advice on the corona virus you're welcome uh, be healthy keep safe be careful but don't panic